Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked and this is going to be part two of our Magic Lantern RAW series. In this part, we're gonna show you how to install Magic Lantern RAW onto your 5D Mark II, T2i, or T3i. Now, things that you may need to know how to do is actually install the actual uh, original Magic Lantern 2.3 files onto your T2i, T3i, or 5D Mark II. So I have four different videos that I put out that kind of explain that. Two of the videos are just going to have you, show you how to do the basic install, and we're going, to, we're going to put all the videos up over in this general vicinity right here, so you're going to want to click on these links if you don't have Magic Lantern already installed. Um, if you have a 64 gig or a 32 gig SD card or CF card, the original uh, basic installs are not going to work. You're actually going to have to mount your card uh, using a different system. So we're going to put those videos down here. And, uh, and those videos will help. Um, you can actually use the two bottom, vi two bottom videos if you want. Those will work just as well as the two top videos up here, which are gonna be your basic install videos. Um, so between those four videos, you should be able to, how to, you should figure out how to install Magic Lantern onto your SD card or CF card. Now, for everybody else that's already got it installed, already has their card mounted, it's actually a really simple process. It's a, pretty much a drag and drop the files um, onto your SD card or CF card. Um, I'm going to be showing you here on the computer here in a second how to do that to make sure that you drag and drop correctly. Um, because mainly what it is, is going to have, it's kind of like your 2.3 Magic Lantern folder full of stuff. But there are some added uh, modules and stuff that are in the folders um, that allow your camera to shoot the raw um, video footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the computer. I'm going to show you how to do that. As well, all the files are going to be, there's going to be a link down below in my description bar that will allow you to uh, download the 5D Mark II RAW files and the T2i and T3i files. Um, the nice thing about the T2i and T3i, if you have both of those cameras like myself, I've set up the folder system so that you can take the SD card out of the T3i camera and you can put it in the T2i camera and the RAW video will allow you to do that. Before, from what I could understand, is what would happen is you had to, if you installed the raw files onto an SD card for the T3i, you could not take it out of the T3i, put it in the T2i, and still record raw. Um, it would not brick your camera, but it causes your camera not to work right, so you'd have to take the SD card out, drop the battery out, put the battery back in, and then you'd be good to go. So this way, this allows your SD card to go between the two devices quite comfortably. As well, with the 5D Mark II, you probably are gonna get some errors. Um, Especially if you go into your, if you go back to look at pictures or video that were not shot in RAW, or pictures that could be shot in RAW, but video that was not shot in RAW, um, and you go into and you go look at that on your 5D Mark II, sometimes what happens is you'll get this weird error and your camera will shut down for a second. Again, all you have to do is pop out your battery, put your battery back in, and then uh, turn your camera back on, and you should be good to go for a little while. Um, I was shooting some RAW footage a couple of days ago with the 5D Mark II and it froze up on me about five or six times in about a 45 minute period. So it still is a little unstable, but in my opinion, I feel like it is stable enough that it is not going to brick my camera. Um, I've been doing Magic Lantern pretty much since they came out in uh, December of 2009, and I have yet to brick a camera, um, and it was very unstable back in December of 2009 when they first came out with it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the computer, we're gonna download our files, and uh, once we've downloaded our files, we're going to put them on the SD and CF card. Then we're going to hit up the 5D Mark II, and I'm going to be using a, uh, let's see what we got, the T3i today. And we're going to be going over some of the settings and understanding how to work RAW within your camera. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to shoot RAW. And part three, by the end of that video, you'll understand how to uh, do your workflow so you can actually edit your RAW footage, um, depending on what kind of editing software you have. So again, if you have any questions, comments, um, leave them down below. Shoot me a message if you have any uh, major questions that you want to message me about. So uh, let's get started. All right, guys. So the first thing you're going to need to do is download the raw files. Um, so if you've already got your card mounted and you have Magic Lantern 2.3 already installed on your cards, then this is going to be pretty simple. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is download the file. So I'm going to click up here. And I'm going to go on and start downloading that file. And I'm going to go on and get the T2i and T3i file downloaded as well. So for 5D Mark II users, T2i users, and T3i users, this video is going to be for all of you. Um, so once that's done, I'm going to go to uh, Show and Finder, our Show and Folder. It'd be Show and Finder with the Mac. Um, this is going to be pretty much the same. This is going to be the same exact process for all Mac users. 
I'm going to double click and we'll let the T2i and T3i keep downloading. I'll walk you through the 5D Mark II process right now. So once it opens down here, um, there it is. So we're going to open that file and all you're going to need to do is move these three files right here. So what I'm going to do now is go to my computer. Well, I hit my game instead of my computer there. My computer. And this is going to be my 5D Mark II is in here. And this is the T2i, T2i Magical Engine 2.3 file system right here. So I'm going to exit out of that. And we'll move this on over. And all we're going to do is just take these three files, bring them on over. And yes, we want to move and replace all these. Move and replace. And you'll notice in your Magic Lantern folder, you're going to have something called modules. And that's where your raw files are going to come from. Um, as well, it updates, I believe, the .fir system um, when you bring this in and your auto exe C system as well. So now that that's done, um, the T2i and T3i uh, download is almost finished for Magic Lantern. It's pretty much the same exact process. So we'll exit out of this. Um, and there'll be links to both of these for the 5D Mark II and the T2i and T3i um, down in my description bar. So you can go click those links and come over to Mediafire and download them. Um, and we'll exit out of that. And we're going to go on and, up and open up my computer once more. And we're going to open up our SD card for the T2i and T3i. Again, it's got 2.3 um, Magic Lantern on it. And the next step, of course, would be to wait for this download to finish, which it should be done. We'll open up Google again, and Google Chrome, and we're almost there, as you guys can see at the bottom of the screen. And there we go. So we're going to click show in folder or sh right click and show in finder for max or control click and double click on it bring it down now we're going to hit this one right here magic lantern t2i t3i raw and then we're just going to take all of these control c and we're going to jump over to our sd card for the T2i and T3i, control V. And it's gonna take a second. You notice it's 44.9 megabytes, which I believe is like the largest uh, Magic Lantern folder system that I've seen to this date. Um, and then we're going to move and replace. And now we have the raw files on the 5D Mark II uh, CF card and the T2i or T3i SD card. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the T3i. We're going to go through some of the functions on it and then we'll reverse it and go over the uh, Mark II and go over some of the functions on it. And then uh, you guys will know a little bit about RAW and, and you'll be ready to shoot. And again in part three we're going to go over that workflow. Okay, so I've now taken the SD card out of the PC. I put it into the Canon T3i. This will work the same exact way if you are a T2i user. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the camera on. And all you Magic Lantern people out there know, you hit that delete button. And if you notice, the menu system is gonna be new. Um, this is a newer menu system. Has not, uh, I've never seen it before, before these Magic Lantern uh, Magic Lantern Raw came out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, oh yeah, and this is a T3i and you now have some audio settings that you didn't have before. Uh, if I remember correctly, I don't think there were really any audio settings for the T3i, but I haven't messed around with it because I just use the onboard audio settings or when we shoot big stuff, we just shoot off the camera. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll all the way over to M. So we're just gonna jump over to M right here. We're gonna click on load modules. And there's your record. So then we're going to go all the way down to our camera setting. And we're going to go down to raw video and click on. And we're going to hit Q. 
and we'll hit the enter button again or set button and then you can pick your setting now things that you guys need to know um, if you notice down here at the bottom uh, it says uh, 1280 by 720 36 megabytes at 23.976 frames per second here's the problem with that the T3i and T2i can only write up to about 22 megabytes per second. So that means you're, until Magic Lantern comes up with another workaround, or this may just be a permanent thing, I do not know, your best bet is to just do the, uh, you might be able to get the, the 960 um, by 540. That's what I can usually get out of my camera. Anything higher than that, you're going to drop frames. It's not going to work. So let's just go on and pick the 960 by... 540 again you're not going to get any audio and then you have a few other settings you can mess around with right here i'm not going to i'm not really going to mess around with them i like these three main settings auto preview aspect 16 by 9 and then 960 by 540. so we're just going to hit the shutter button up at the top i'm going to take the lens off this bad boy so as you guys can see so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hit the record button and up here in the upper right corner, it's doing its thing. It's letting me know how long it's been recording, how many frames it's done, uh, how many frames it expects before it might crash. Um, right now, it doesn't look like it's going to stop. Well, we made it 325 frames, so we'll try this again. Again, I'm not using a, I think the card I'm using may be 30 megabytes. So this card, and it's a Transcend, which makes, they make a good card, but it, it just may not be a fast enough card if you have one of the SanDisk um, cards that do 45 megabytes or 90 megabytes. You're going to be able to get, you're going to be able to comfortably get that, comfortably get that 960 by 540. So we'll try again. We'll try to see if we can't record here. It's also letting you know how many megabytes per second it's using. So right now at 960 by uh, by 540, it's doing roughly 16, and see, it's not going to make it. So what we could do is we go back into our menu system. Uh, we go back into raw, make sure it's on. We can go back in and we can hit 86, 864 by 486, hit the shutter speed, and let's see if it will record better um, at that. So again, this is how many megabytes it's used up altogether, what it's using per second roughly, and, uh, and then you know, you've got your frames and it's expected to get as high as 18, uh, 1800 frames. It will probably do more than that. Um, so we can see it's going to keep doing that. And that's pretty much how you shoot the raw video. Now, you're not, you will not be able to preview the raw video within the camera. You will have to bring it into your computer, and you'll have to do the workflow. Again, the workflow is quite tedious, but for people out there that want a beautiful-looking picture at 14 bits, um, it's, I guess, worth it for you guys. I don't have a need for it as of right now. It just is too uh, time-consuming, and I just don't have that time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the 5D Mark II and we're going to show you some 5D Mark II stuff um, once we throw in the CF card and uh, that will be it for this video. Okay guys, so let's go on and turn on the 5D Mark II. Let's go over a few of our raw video settings real quick. Once it's on, we're going to go into movie mode, hit our delete button, scroll all the way over to M, hit load modules now, right here, scroll over to the camera, scroll all the way down to the bottom, let's go into that, and now we get to pick our resolution. Now, if you notice, down here, this is, uh, this is the, the highest resolution it will go in. Um, it's giving me the yellow, which means it's probably going to skip frames. And uh, at this resolution, it will probably not even get like five frames. Uh, but it can shoot, it, it takes up to 80 megabytes per second um, at 23 megabytes or 23 frames per second. So uh, Mark III should be able to handle this, te in, uh, technically speaking, in theory. But uh, Mark II will not be able to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to where we have quality that we can handle. So uh, this is 57 megabytes per second at 16, 1600 by 980. Um, so according to my CF card, the best quality I'm going to probably get is 1472 by 828. So we're going to go on and select that. We're going to hit the shutter button up here, just half. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go on and hit the record button, which is right here. And of course, it's going to give us all that information up here. Um, so I'm doing roughly uh, 55 megabytes per second. Uh, in my previous attempts, this probably will skip a frame eventually, but maybe not. Maybe this time we'll actually keep going. I've already shot uh, right about a gig already. And let's see here. I just hit over a gigabyte of footage at uh, a little over 600 frames. So it seems to be holding um, that resolution down really well, which is a little over 720p, which is really nice. Um, so you can get some pretty decent looking quality video out of the uh, Mark II, and it's still going. Usually it's skipped a frame by now, so I guess everything seems to be wanting to work correctly. Um, sometimes it will skip frames even though you have a fast enough card. Just things happen, the camera can't, for some reason the camera's off, or the, you might have to reinstall your firmware, or for some reason you just got a dud card or a card that's just a tad bit too slow compared to another one. Uh, I feel like SD cards coming off the line can be very... Uh, sporadic as um, far as uh, you know it could be off a couple megabytes uh, download or write, write speed or, or read speed so that can be a little bit frustrating but it's holding it really good and we're coming up on uh, wow uh, almost four megabytes of footage right now as I've been talking uh, or not megabytes but gigabytes uh, four gigabytes of footage so it does take up a lot of footage uh, really fast um, but it does get some pretty very pretty uh, uh, quality video. So it's really nice. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go on and stop recording. Um, it took uh, did right over four gigabytes of footage, and it took a little over twenty three hundred pictures per se. Um, again, we'll go over all that in the workflow. So it's really simple. I'm setting it up, and you just go in here. And so I shot at four seventy two by eight twenty eight, which isn't bad. No problems. Again, this was my 90 megabyte card, um, Transcend. I do think ScanDisk does make a pretty good card. So that is how you set up your quality, um, your resolution and everything with the 5D Mark II when it comes to raw video. Again, if it's in green, you're usually okay, but the second you step out of green, uh, you're not gonna, you're gonna have problems. We'll see, now it's saying that I can handle 1600 by 980. So we'll go on and click on that just to see if it will actually record any. And we'll see if it will skip a frame. The second it skips one frame, it just it just stops. I think you can set it up so that if it skips a frame, it will keep going as it skips frames. But if it skips a lot of frames, then you're going to have issues. So it seems to be holding um, that footage quite comfortably. Um, that's the highest resolution I've been able to get out of the camera. But I just formatted the card, so maybe card being completely empty, um, except for the four gigs from the previous shoot that we just did. Uh, seems to be handling it with uh, no issues or problems whatsoever at the moment. And my battery is fully charged. So anyways, I uh, hope this helped you guys out. We will catch you next time um, when we put out our workflow video. Check us out on Facebook at David D. Images, Twitter at Media Unlocked, and MediaUnlocked.net for our new website that we recently launched as it keeps on recording with no problems whatsoever. You guys have a great day.